Hi, I welcome all of you in my channel and in this video, reference to part 2 of latent scale design and base and the feedback of viewers about writing the expression for solving the treatment. So in this part, I will solve all of the expressions and then we will discuss the ANOVA table and our decision on the hypothesis. First of all, I will write expression for sum of square total. So I know that y triple dot is 1 and n are total number of observations are 25. Let's go towards the data to find what are the individual values. I have to take care of all these individual values minus 1, minus 8, minus 7 till there's 6 and then I will sum of them. So, so the standard way is written for too much data is minus 1 square plus minus 8 square. Just write two values then add the plus sign three dots plus the last value we have we have the last value equal to six here however during the calculation you will have to write all you have to include all of these values if either you want to using the excel mini tab or uh, the calculator upon solving i got 676 now i will do it for the sum of scale treatments so for sum of the square treatment t is equal to 5 and this term is same for all of them 10 square and 25 let's go towards the data there we have the sum of all five latents a b c d e i mean five levels so i will take the sum of uh, i will take the square of all these five values and then uh, sum of all the squares so it will be 18 square plus 20 minus 24 whole square again two dot three dots you can add all four values it's not a condition that you will have to just again and again using this format standard form we got 330 for sum of square treatments for sum of square of treatment uh, rows i have y i here i have y i dot dot so i represent the rows i have five different rows let's go towards the data the sum of the five rows are minus 14 9 5 5, 3, 7. Take the square of all these terms and then their addition. So let's go towards the formula. So I'm basically writing the expression for sum of the square rows and here upon solving I got the value that is equal to 68. Now we are left with sum of square of columns and sum of square for the total for the error sorry. So I already know that we have p is equal to 5 10 and 25 so these values are already written by me in the start so that it will be easy for me to know what's left with this the summation for the columns each column is minus 18 plus 18 minus 4 5 and 9 let's take their square so right here minus 18 whole square plus 18 whole square then three dots and after that 9 whole square and this is equal to 150. Now we are only left with sum of square of the error. So this is a formula for calculating the sum of square of the error. Let me put all of the values that I got using the calculations 330 minus um, 68 minus 150 and I got the result of sum of square of the error is equal to 128. Please keep in mind that all of these terms are scared values. So this is a hint for you people in the exam as well as in the quizzes assignment that sum of square values can't be ever negative. Either it is for some square treatments, rows, columns, error, total. It can't be a negative term ever. So this is the ANOVA table. All of these values have been calculated. The degrees of freedom associated with all of them and then mean scale obtained by dividing the each value sum of square with their degrees of freedom 68 divided by 4 150 divided by 4 128 by 12 okay there is no uh, you can see mean of scale for a total ever please don't calculate it then we have calculated three f naught values for the formulation or treatment 1.59 for our first nicest factor 3.51 for the nicest uh, second nicest factor this p value has been calculated by uh, this is the output of the mini type software however you can calculate it in the excel by using the command now these three are my f statistic value or f naught value or f calculated value i have to compare these values with some f tabulated or f critical or you can say f distribution value so 
How we can look at? We have the formula f of alpha n1 minus 1 comma n2 minus 2, where n is the degrees of n1 minus 1 is the degree of freedom for the numerator and n2 minus 2 is the degree of freedom for the denominator. So here I have 0 0.05 f0.05 this n minus 1 is the degree of freedom for the numerator in this case and all of these cases we have 4 degrees of freedom for the numerator and n2 minus 2 is the degree of freedom for the error term in all of these cases I have 12 so by looking into the table I got 3.26 let's go towards the table so this is the table for the f distribution uh, with this is our f distribution table with alpha value 0.05 v1 v2 so we have v1 is equal to degrees of freedom for the numerator in this row, 4 degrees of freedom. And then this, uh, in the column, we have degrees of freedom for the denominator, so we have 12. So upon the intersection of this 4 and 12, we got 3.26 as our critical value or f tabulated value. So this is my critical value or f tabulated value. Now how we will now take the decision? Our rejection criteria is that if our calculated value or f naught value is greater than this critical value or tabulated value. So let me write it. This is F0 value and this is F critical value. Okay. So in case is if F0 is greater than F critical, we reject our null hypothesis. So let me correct it. F C R I F critical. So 7.73 is greater than 3.26. It is rejected. First one is rejected. The second one is smaller than 3.26 it is we fail to reject and third one is also greater than 3.26 so it is also rejected based upon this decision now we will see what are our conclusions upon the formulation so this is the standard way of the writing h1 and h3 the first and third hypothesis null hypothesis are rejected this not represent null hypothesis because f naught of the formulation and f operators is greater than the critical value 3.26 there is a significant difference in the mean burning rate generated by different rocket propellant formulations in short we have five different uh, formulation for the rocket and we found a significant difference among them on the burning rate further we also find that we have a significant difference um, of upon the scales of the five operators upon the mean burning rate further the third one hypothesis h2 is failed to reject so we found that there is no significant difference there is no significant difference for the batch in between the batches of raw materials on the mean burning rate the last topic to be discussed in this video is how to calculate the residuals so residuals can be calculated this is my each observation y triple dot is the grand sum take mean of them in this case we have 10 divided by 25 it's it it comes out to be this mean of grand sum then take the averages of row sum some of the treat take the average of the treatment sums and also take the averages of column sums so by doing all this for each observation keep in mind you have 25 observation in this question so there will be 25 residual terms and these 25 residual terms will help will be help you in calculating the mean scale of the error and then this mean scale error you can call it pooled standard deviation or variance of the model so that was all about this latent scale design series of videos there are total three videos if you have any question you can ask me in the comment section you can ask me on the WhatsApp. Please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Bye.